Climate change is a fact. Um, we've all just got to get used to that. We know why we should be worried about it. But the big issue for, for, for engineering is, is how do we deal with it? We have to start engineering it now because if we don't engineer it now, um, then, um, then we just won't have time to, to, to complete things by 2050. We've got somewhere in the region of 75,000 ships at sea at the moment, many of which will continue in the, in the service until 2050. Um, and we have to look at um, how they're being operated. I'm not an expert on climate change, but again, you need to just watch the news. But I think the, the danger that we have is that we are still going to be moving large chunks of oil about the world. And the, and the danger is that some of that could get spilled and we could, we could affect the marine environment. And if you affect the marine environment, well, it's a CO2 sink as well. So are you going to see yourself in a position where safety of life, safety of life at sea will be affected as well? And I think those are the, the kind of things that will, will happen. I think if we don't start early, uh, if you think about the shipyards at the moment are beginning to, to expand their capacity so that, so that they can build, the, build new ships. Uh, the danger is that if we follow the hockey stick curve idea that we just keep going slow and then sort of somewhere about 2045 we say, well, let's just hurry and get this done, there won't be the capacity in the industry. I think technology is important. And I, and I think there is a, a risk with the new environmental technology that the first generation of it doesn't work that well. So we need to de-risk the technology as much as we possibly can. There's a big piece of big piece of work about training and educating. There's a big piece of work about making sure that the people who build these things, who design them, who cre who come up with the concepts for them, um, understand the limitations of the marine environment and, and can and can cope with that. There's um, there's a lot about making sure that. In, again, in, in this building, the International Maritime Organization, uh, the regulators understand these things and that the regulations they produce uh, not only deal with climate change, but, but, but produce safe ships. But behind it all is, is the need for there to be a, a, a global, reliable supply chain um, and, and enough resilience built into it uh, that it can cope with a, an increasingly turbulent world. I'm not sure the skills are there at the moment to, to support the technology. One reason being the technology is not fully developed yet. Uh, so that, that's, that's the first thing. Um, the second one is that, that the regulations that, that will drive training uh, are, are still being developed as well. So the skills are not there at the moment, certainly for seafarers. And that's something that IMRS, um, with, its, um, with its status at, at the International Maritime Organization and its involvement in accrediting universities and nautical colleges around the world is, is very well equipped to do. There will be some great opportunities. Um, there will be some opportunities for, um, for, for um, new technology. There will be opportunities for um, younger, more able people to, to get involved in those newer technologies. But at the other end of it, there will be older technologies that will be relying and will be, will, will be, will be dying off. I believe that People fundamentally want to do do the right thing, uh, and, and I believe that you know, my institute, for example, has got a great opportunity in all of this with with its uh, scientists and its engineers and its technologists to actually move a lot of that that um, that stuff forward. Um, so, so I'm, I'm I'm optimistic that we'll get there, um, but it won't be a it won't be a tidy path.